Hello everyone, Kamats here. In this video I'm going to be showing you this open source flashlight. And before you go and say, hey, this is going to be boring, it's actually pretty cool. But before we go into that, I wanted to mention this video was actually posted to Libri first. Libri, or Library, is a decentralized content platform that I've been using lately. Thanks to Dave Jones over at EEV blog for referring me over to Liberty. So I've actually posted this video first over there, which you can find a link in the video description for my channel on Liberty. And then it got posted automatically to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it actually went through Liberty before it reached you. And if you're watching this on Liberty, congratulations. That's where you should be watching it. So go check it out in the video description if you want to watch the rest of the video on there. I have already posted exclusive content on Libri that isn't on YouTube, and I will be continuing to do that. So if you want to get the latest information of what I'm working on, you'll probably want to follow me over on Libri. So let's get into the light. As you can see, it's very small. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero with a little Adafruit screen on it. And I have a ruler down here. And this is the programming cable that you use to change the firmware on the device. And you can see it has these very small sharp pogo pins to reprogram it and I'll show you where it connects inside the light. You can see right there little connections and I'll put a zoomed in picture here for you but those tiny connections connect up to the pogo pins just like that and then you uh, reprogram the light. There are a few different software packages that you can use to program it, and this is of course USB. This has an Atmel ATtiny 1634 microcontroller in it that controls all of the functionality of the light. And as I said before, it is completely open source, so if I go to the computer, I can show you the source code for the light. Now this first file is just the default configuration see it's an ATtiny 1634 uh, just listed in there you know these are comments so that's just information the firmware is called Andrel which is a sword from Lord of the Rings and it's made by a very talented programmer that goes by Toy Keeper and you can see here that she's put a lot of work into it there's thousands of lines of code that run this flashlight now you might be thinking that's a lot of work for just a flashlight why doesn't it just go on and off well it's because there's a lot of different things you can do with a light to make it more convenient and more useful as a tool. I will have a link to this repository in the video description, so check that out if you want to read through it yourself. I'm going to just quickly scroll down here to show you some of the code. Okay, so you can see here that this is the state machine for the off state of the flashlight and what it's supposed to do. And this is just one example of the complexity that's been built into this light. And some of you may be asking, why is this so complex? It's just a light, turn it on and off. Well, you can't just turn it on and off. It'll work fine like that. You can push the on button, it'll turn on. You can push it again, it'll turn off. But this allows a lot more functionality for picking a specific level of light, for example, or turning on a mode or checking the battery level. Like You can actually click three times from off and it'll tell you the current battery level in blinks and you can see the code that does that right here now you may have noticed that this isn't actually the main program this this is the application so to speak there's also a main programmer kind of like an OS that she named spaghetti monster and that takes care of all the low-level hardware stuff and events as you can see event and so on. Like I said, there's thousands of lines of code that run this light. And the advantage here is you can change whatever you want to make it run the way you want to. And just to show you what I mean by that, here is the rest of the code for this portion of the program that runs on this light. But like I said, there's also the spaghetti monster code, which is here. And you can see you have ADC, EEPROM, events, here's your main, ramping, interrupts, states. I mean, everything is here that deals with 
the lower level of the code. Uh, you could call this like a an OS if you want. And if you're looking at the date modified here and thinking, oh, this isn't really being maintained, she just made some pretty significant changes to the code that she was working on for months, dealing with how the temperature regulation is handled by the light. Those changes just aren't showing here because they're in a different branch. I just wanted to show you this because this is the repository for the code that shipped with the light. So I'll show you a little bit more details about the light itself. If we switch back to here, you can see that the aux LEDs are lit and I can actually unscrew the top here. It has a little piece of uh, glass with, I believe, anti-reflective coating on it. And you can see the aux LEDs in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the studio light reflecting off of them. Let me actually turn that off for a second. There we go. So you can see the aux LEDs and they actually change color, they're RGB. So for example, if I click four times to put it in lockout mode, I have it configured to show the battery level and it shows blue for a nearly full battery, green for a kind of medium level of battery, red for, hey, you better charge it soon, and no lights at all for your battery's dead. You'll probably get some a little bit of light out of it, but you know, it's it's pretty much dead. So I'll turn back on the light. You might want to look away for a second. There we go. And I already showed you the connections on the bottom where you connect up the programming cable. You can see the manufacturer and the model number there. And it comes in different colors with uh, different LED options. Uh, for the main LEDs in different color temperatures. This one is uh, SST20 LEDs in 5000 Kelvin. And it runs off an 18650 battery, just like the Relic XR2 that I had previously shown on my channel. And as you can see, it's really not that much bigger than its own battery. It's a very, very small light. Definitely fits in your pocket easily. But the main reason for this video is to talk about the open source nature of this light. I will be doing a full review of it after I have more time to use the programming cable to actually make firmware changes and see how that all process goes. I have been using the light as a kind of at night light before I go to bed. I'll stick it next to uh, my bed on a table and I set the brightness to a kind of nice level for going to sleep. Uh, you can set, uh, as you saw in the code, the brightness to any one of many levels just by ramping. And you can see this is the lowest brightness level. And if I hold it down, it just gets brighter. And it can actually get very, very bright. Uh, just whoa. That's the highest part of uh, the ramp it's called and if I double click it actually goes to turbo which is just nuts but like I said I will be doing a full review on this light and talking about the programming cable and what I did with it and the changes I made to the firmware and how easy or hard it was so if you have some suggestions on things you'd like to see me do please put that down in the comments section and I will definitely include those things in my next video about this light. Also for those of you then that have been waiting for me to put this into my Odroid Go Advance, my uh, Qi cable here, that will be coming very soon since I'm stuck inside like the rest of you. So I have some time for these projects now. So hopefully you uh, liked that video. If you did, please subscribe. Uh, if you're on Libri, please follow. Pretty much the same thing. So Libri is just another way for me to put my content out there on a decentralized platform so everyone can access it. So more videos coming very soon. Thank you for watching. That's all for now.